Hi, I'm Missy McTaggart and in this video we're going to be looking at quartiles and the interquartile range. Now this is a topic that appears in both National 5 and National 5 applications of maths. Now before I go on and do quartiles and interquartile range, I just need to kind of try and make you understand what it is we're doing here. So far in maths at BGE you've seen these type of questions where you've asked for mean, mode, median and range. Now I'm going to put these numbers into order and then we get started on reminding ourselves what these mean. Now, range was the highest takeaway lowest, so that was 57 takeaway 2, which was 55. The mean is when we add them all up and divide by how many numbers we've got, which gives us 99 divided by 9 numbers, so the mean is 11. The median is the middle number. Now, 9 numbers in the list, I've got 4 one side, 4 the other. My middle number is 5. And the mode is the most common number, the number that appears the most, which is 2. Now, based on these numbers I've given you, some of these averages aren't suitable at all, right? So when I've asked which average is best suited, it's actually easier to do process of elimination and explain why some of the others are no use to us. Now, I've got four answers, 55, 11, 5 and 2, all very, very different. So the range is 55. Now, there's one number in here which is completely affecting my data and I'm hoping you've noticed it. The number is 57. That 57, if that wasn't there, my range would be a lot lower. My mean would be a lot lower. So I'm going to say the it's not the range because it's badly affected by the 57. Okay. I'm also, for that reason, going to say it's not the mean because the mean is 11. The mean of 11 appears in there after the 10. So it's right at the top of my set of data. So 11 isn't a realistic um, type of average either. The median... Five. Do you know what? The median's not too bad, actually. It's kind of representative of our numbers. So I'll come back to that one. But the mode of two, that's my lowest number as well. Now, if I put this into context and told you that over nine days, we timed how late our bus was, or over nine days, we recorded how many phone calls we got, and we then started talking about, well, how late is our bus normally, or how many phone calls do we get a day normally? It's really unrealistic to say, well, I usually get 55 because I don't, I clearly get like between two and 10. It's unrealistic to say, well, I get 11, because all my data is under 11 bar one number. It's unrealistic to also say, well, most commonly I get two phone calls or the bus is two minutes late, because a lot of the days where it's a lot longer than two minutes late. So the most realistic here is the median, okay? So I would use the median as the most realistic because it's not affected by all the other bits of data. Now, all these different averages here, rely on what on certain numbers like the highest the lowest the middle the most common there is another way of looking at statistics that takes into account more of the information of the number or more um relevant spread of the numbers and we do this by finding a thing called quartiles and interquartile range now if you think of the word quartiles any word starting with qu q u a or q u a r has a connection to four quads um quarter uh, quad bike, quadruple, there's a connection of four. So when we quartiles, what we're actually doing is we are splitting a list of numbers into four equal bits. And the quartiles are the three values in that list that appear 50% of the way along, i.e. in the middle, 25% of the way along, so the middle of the lower half, and 75% of the way along, so three quarters of the way along the list. So these have all got fancy names. So what we do, first of all, is we're just going to, split this list into four. Now, count how many numbers I've got. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 numbers. If you have got 15 numbers or 15 people in a class and you were to split it into two groups, you would have seven, seven, and a wee person left over. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to count in seven numbers. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, there's my middle number. And just to check, I've got seven either side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there is the middle. Now you could do this by coming in, like um, from the left and the right, the left and the right, the left and the right, like that with your fingers. But you don't need to, right? Think of how many numbers on your list, half it. And if you've got a remainder, then it's a wee middle number there. Now that is my median, that is my Q2. So that's something we've already done before is find the median value. But numerically now that's called Q2, it's called quartile 2. We then have to find the lower quartile, which is halfway down this lower half. 
So I'm going to take that eight out of the picture just now and focus on these seven numbers down the bottom. If I can count in, I can go three numbers, circle that seven and see how I've got three numbers on the other side. So that's symmetrical. So my Q1 is seven. That is 25% of the way along my list. I'm going to do the same with the top. I've got seven numbers. So again, I can go three in from each side and there's my middle number. So this is your Q1, your Q2 and your Q3. All right. Now, depending on how many numbers I've got in my list, the positioning of these varies a little bit. So my upper, upper quartile is number 10. So what we now do is instead of looking at the overall range of the numbers, we look at the interquartile range. So we're looking at that middle 50% of the data. All right. Because remember, sometimes there's a really high number, sometimes a really low number that can skew it a wee bit. So we're now looking at the middle 50% of the data, which is a seven up to 10. So the interquartile range is this formula here in yellow. It's Q3 minus Q1. Now you have to memorize this. It's not given to you, but I think if you've got a wee bit of common sense of the in use of the English language, it's quite simple to remember. Range means highest take away lowest. Quartile range means using your quartiles. So you're doing your highest quartile take away your lowest quartile. So we're doing 10 take away 7, which is 3. Now this number of 3 means absolutely nothing right now, unless you've got something to compare this to. So it's worth noting that the higher the interquartile range, the more spread out the data is. So if I do another example, and my interquartile range turns out to be higher, then those numbers I'm using are more spread out. So let's look at example two. So here is my list of numbers. Well, the first thing that's jumping out at me is not in order. So step one is put them into order, okay? Now, once you put them in order, always double check that you have the same amount of numbers that you started with in the previous list. So I've got two, four, six, eight, ten numbers. So ten numbers on my list. So I'm just writing n equals ten to remind me that there's ten numbers there, okay? Now, if you've got 10 numbers to find the middle, there isn't an actual middle number this time because 10 people split into two groups gives you exactly five in each group. So there is no wee leftover person. So we count in five from each side and this time we use a line. So if it is a middle number, I circle it. If it's between two, I use a line. So my Q2 is between 10 and 10, which is just going to be 10. Then I find the middle of the lower number, five numbers there. Hopefully you can count in two from each side. The seven's in the middle. Do the same to the top half, two from each side. The first 13 is in the middle. So this is my Q1, my Q2, and my Q3. Now, make life nice and easy for your marker. Please write these out again at the side. So my Q1 is seven, my Q2 is 10, and my Q3 is 13. Now, to get my interquartile range, I'm going to shorten this to IQR. It's going to be Q3 minus Q1. So I'm doing 13 take away seven, which is six. So I've now got two examples there. My first example had an interquartile range of three. My second example had an interquartile range of six. So what does that mean? Which example was more varied? So just remind you, example one, the IQR was three. Example two, the IQR was six. Now remember the bigger this number, the bigger the range of the data. So we're going to write a little sentence. So we're going to say example two, was more varied. So more varied is just another way of saying your numbers are more spread out, there's bigger gaps between them all, was more varied due to a higher interquartile range. Now in an exam, you would probably write that. But you don't even need to say because the interquartile range is perfectly acceptable to say example two was more varied. All right, or the whatever example two referred to, be it bus times or something like that. So I'm going to do a wee comparison sentence because this is where... So I'm going to do just a little example on having to compare two results because this is a bit people sometimes struggle with. And this can be tabbed on the end of a standard deviation question or it can be tabbed on the end of um, a quartiles. So here are my two scenarios. So let's pretend we've already worked out the green part for part A and part the blue part was given for your part B. And then you're asked to make two comp comments comparing the scores. So we've got dancers in a competition. In the first round, the median score was 6.5 and the IQR is 2.5. In the second round, the median was 8 and the interquartile range was 4. So to make two comments, first comment, we're going to talk about the median. Now, please remember, median is a type of average. Mean, mode, median range are averages. So we're going to change the word median to average. 
Now, in the second round, the average is higher, right? So it's gone from 6.5 to 8. So my first second, my first sentence is going to say, on average, the scores, because we're talking about Dan's scores, in round two, were higher because they've gone up, right? So I've changed the word median to on average. I've talked about scores, we're talking about scores in a dancing contest. And I've also mentioned that I'm talking about round two. So I'm taking the stance of round two. Now that's one sentence. The other sentence has got to comment on the IQRs. Now the IQR has also gone up in round two. Now the higher the IQR, the more varied the numbers. So had the IQR gone down, I would have said the scores were less varied in round two. But in terms of dancing, this isn't good. The scores have got more varied in round two. So there's my second sentence. So on average, the scores in round one were higher. And in round two, the scores were more varied. Okay. Excuse my handwriting. Okay, so to recap, why I've written what I've written. So to compare the medians, I've changed that to average. And because the median had gone up, I've said that the scores on average are higher, or the scores on average have gone up. And because IQR is higher, it means that the scores in round two are more varied as well. Now, you could take this from the complete other stance, and you could say, on average, the scores in round one were lower, and the scores in round one were less varied. It might have asked you, has the dancers improved? Now, if the average score has gone up, you could say, yes, the scores have improved. But as dancers, if your scores are more varied, it means that some of them haven't improved. Some of them have got worse. Anyway, that's the type of comparison sentence. And you'll see very similar ones to this when you're doing standard deviation as well. It's the measure of spread. The higher the interquartile range, the more spread out the numbers are. I really hope this has helped. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye. It's also worth noting, by the way, I've only mentioned interquartile range. If you've been told semi-interquartile range, it's no longer part of the National 5 course. So this video has been edited to just mention interquartile range. Thank you.